Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Run Level Zero. Today we're looking at Arch Bang Linux. This is a distribution that I've wanted to review for quite some time, but not too long ago Arch had some issues and their website was offline. They've been up for a while now, but I wanted to make sure that they had enough time to fully recover and work out any bugs before we offered up a review. So here we are. As the name implies, Arch Bang is a Arch based Linux distribution. Arch is known for being lightweight, lightning fast, just a very robust system, but it's designed to be built from the ground up by the end user and as such it tends to only fall into the realm of, of the more advanced Linux users. It's really been out of the reach of the, of the intermediate to beginner. Over the years there have been several distributions that have popped up that have been Arch based and, and that really brought Arch closer to a beginning user. Uh, distributions such as Antragos and Manjaro come to mind. And while those distributions aim to bring a complete out-of-the-box experience to the end user, ArchBang takes a more minimalist approach. They're going to give you a minimally configured open box desktop environment. We're going to examine that here in just a little bit. But you can't really consider it a fully configured desktop. There's going to be a lot you're going to need to do after first installing ArchBang to really make it totally functional. And because of that, I do not recommend ArchBang if you are a beginning user. But if you have been using Linux for a while, if you would consider yourself a more intermediate user, if you're comfortable in the command line in the terminal, updating your system, installing, removing software, uh, if you're comfortable with terminal-based um, editors such as the Vi, Vim, uh, Nano, those type of text editors. If you're comfortable uh, editing your own system configuration files, then Arch, ArchBang might be right up your alley. It makes a really good platform for learning what's going on under the hood in your distribution and, and really for experimentation and growth in Linux in general. Also, if you're an advanced user and you've perhaps built an Arch desktop before, ArchBang makes a good launching platform. If you want to install an Arch-based system, but you don't want to really go from scratch, ArchBang makes a great starting point, especially for customizing. It's a good launch pad. One of the most appealing things to me about Arch is the availability of the AUR. That's the Arch User Repository. It really, and anything that you would want to install is going to be available in the AUR and there's lots of great support available for it. So this is really a great drawing feature for me for, for Arch Linux as well as the amount of support and documentation that's available for Arch. Because it is designed to be built from the ground up by the end user, Arch is probably the best documented Linux distribution out there. So let's take a look at ArchBang and see what we get. Now as is traditional with me, I have it installed in a virtual, or actually it's running in a virtual. We're, we're going to be looking at the live version here. It has two gigabytes of RAM, two dedicated processors. And you can see we have a beautiful, simple, open box desktop that, that we're provided with. The reason I decided to review the live version instead of one that's a clean install, uh, we're, I'm going to come back later with a new video on what to do with a clean install of ArchBang and how to get it configured so you can install software and, and get your mirror list set up. But there are a few things that are available in the live version that are no longer present after install and I wanted to highlight a couple of those features. On this live CD, it boots really fast, folks. This thing went from grub menu to fully booted, ready to go in under 20 seconds on this virtual. Uh, that, that's really quick. So you have this nice light desktop. On the right hand side, we do have Conky running. And as is similar with uh, other uh, Arch based open box desktops like uh, Manjaro box 
uh, you, you have shortcuts up here. Also, you see this, this is similar to what is in CrunchBang as well. And just as an aside, ArchBang is named after the Debian-based CrunchBang. That's pretty neat. They, they both have similar philosophies. But you have shortcuts up here. So if you hit super key, and if you're not familiar, the super key is your Windows key. Uh, super T will open up your terminal. Okay, so Super F will give you your file manager, Super E, editor, and so forth. So that's really, really interesting, really neat. Across the bottom of the screen, you have an excellent Tent 2 panel with some great transparencies set up. As well as on that panel, you have your network connection, volume manager, battery monitor, if applicable, as well as your date time. Right clicking the desktop brings up your menus. And you have some nice pipe menus that are uh, that are being generated for you here. So really simply, what you have is a file manager, and your file manager is in the form of Space FM. Really lightweight, really simple, makes a great starting point. You have a ter terminal, your text editor, which is mEdit, really lightweight no complaints there. Web browser is Firefox and it does take a moment for Firefox to load. There we go. And it is a bare bones install of Firefox. Takes you to the Archbang Wiki as your home page. You can run a command. I believe that's D menu that's running up there. So we'll escape out of that. Okay, you also have a shortcut to installation. This is one of the things I wanted to show you here. There is a guide. It's going to take you online, take you to the ArchBang installation document. One of the strengths about Arch and Arch-based distributions is their documentation. As I said earlier, because it's designed to be built from the ground up by the end user, anything you need, you're going to be able to find it in the ArchBang or the Arch Wiki. And this installation guide is great. This actually shows you, walks you through step by step how to install your system. Also, some of the things you need to do post install to get your system up and running, installing video drivers and that sort of thing. So, if you do want to play around with Arch or Arch based distros, you're going to need to be able to, to use the forms and use the online documentation. That's going to be critical for you. Also, if we launch a terminal in the live version, we type in uh, sudo gparted. If I can type it here, we'll launch gparted for us, which is a great graphical uh, uh, partition editing utility. This is really convenient to have. If you go to install this on your system, I would highly recommend using Gparted to partition your system uh, before before you even get started. The installer is a text-based installer, and it's not really difficult to go through. But you know, the the, the installer or the partition editor that that is present in the installer is text-based. So if if you feel more comfortable, I mean, it's functional; it works. But if you're more comfortable using a, a a GUI text editor, Gparted is installed here. As far as applications go, it is a minimal install. A couple of things I would like to highlight though is that they do have Compton installed. That's going to give you some very, very basic uh, graphical effects, like some basic transparencies and that sort of thing. Uh, under graphics, you have a basic image viewer for network, of course, Firefox. Under systems, you can customize the look and feel. Some very simple uh, settings here for your color and icon theme, mouse point, mouse pointer, and that sort. Let's see. Under uh, settings, you also have your monitor settings, your network connections, your open box, and panel two configuration managers are also under settings. For system, HTOP and Space FM. For places, you can navigate to your various uh, folders from right here, right within your context menu. It's a pretty nice pipe menu to have installed. 
Recent files are also displayed and for preferences you can take a screenshot. For eye candy of course you have the Compton you can edit the Compton config file. For key bindings you can edit those here and your open box settings. Now if you install new software, say you installed Chromium, you installed the system and then you, you got it configured wanted to install Chromium, you can regenerate your pipe menus from here so that you can add Chromium to your menu. And ladies and gentlemen, that's really about it. It's a very simple, very lightweight, very fast system, but do not underestimate it. This Arch Bang is very robust. It's lightweight, it's stable, it's lightning fast. And it also makes a like I said earlier, it makes a great learning platform. It also makes a great base platform for customization. After you install this system, if you want to, you can install other uh, desktop environments, especially once you get the AUR up and running. You, you'll have access to the latest versions of Cinnamon and Gnome Shell and all those. Um, if you wanted to keep the, the lightweight feel, the, light, the lightweight desktop environment, but with a more modern desktop or you prefer a more traditional desktop, I would recommend LXDE or Razer QT because they both use the open box window manager by default. So, you know, th those, those desktop environments will integrate here very, very nicely. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Like I said earlier, I do plan to come back with another video and show you how to get a base ArchBang Linux clean install up and running. How do you get it customized? What do you need to do to make it a, a more functional desktop? So keep your eyes open for that. Again, I do not recommend this for a beginning user. But if you do feel like you've been in Linux long enough and you want to stretch your, stretch your legs a bit, learn your system a little bit better, Give Archbang a try. You can't go wrong. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope to be with you soon for another video.